Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine. Today I'm bringing you the ROG Strix X670E eGaming Wi Fi motherboard review. So, right off the bat, you want to know how much this motherboard costs. It's not a cheap motherboard, it's $500 or $499 on Amazon. And in SA, that translates into about 10,500 rand, as you can see from Progenix. Unfortunately, I don't think that you can buy this motherboard locally. I looked on several online retail stores and all of them had it as out of stock. I can't remember the last time this motherboard was in stock, but if it is going to be in stock, you're looking at around 10,500, which coincidentally is the same price that you would pay if you had to import this motherboard to your door from Amazon, which is about $620. And that does actually translate to 10,500 Rand at the current exchange rate. So what are you getting for 10,500? Well, the first thing I wanna tell you is that it actually makes going for a hero or an extreme board rather pointless. And I know that perhaps it's something that Asus may not like me to say, but it actually is true. Because if you think about the platform limitations or how the platform presents itself, most of the things that you want from an X670 platform are presented on this motherboard, the Strix E. Can you imagine on this motherboard, you have 13 USB ports on the Ray IO, 13. Three of them are type C, one of which is 20 gigabits per second. And the rest of them are 10 gigabits per second. You understand what that means? None of that five gigabits per second shenanigans that you get from other motherboards, which cost more than this one. So it's all 10 gigabits per second plus on this motherboard, at least on the rear IO. And if you need an additional 20 gigabits per second port, you do have one as a header option for the front IO. Now, of course, there are boards that offer from competitors that offer this sort of connectivity as well, but a lot of them actually cost more than this one. So it's very rare that I find myself in a situation where I'm like, an ROG motherboard is offering better value for money than the competition or even within their own lineup. For instance, let's talk about the M.2 sockets. Recently, I was impressed that there are low end boards retailing for about seven and a half grand that offer four M.2 sockets, all of which are Gen 4. As impressive as that is, that's not Gen 5. And we all know that we might start. In fact, we are likely to start seeing Gen 5 SSDs coming to us this year. And with that said, this motherboard offers not one, two, but three Gen 5 M.2 sockets. That's right, three of them. Of course, the first one is located closest to the CPU. And that one actually has a direct heat pipe that is going to the M.2 socket cooler, meaning that you'll be able to run your M.2 Gen 5 SSD at full speed without necessarily experiencing throttling. And talking further about the possibility of throttling of Gen 5 M.2 SSDs and in recognition of the fact that they might actually run pretty hard, ROG has included a very thick slab of aluminum heatsink that's in addition to what you get by default on the motherboard. So this is an additional optional feature, but I think given the kind of speeds that we are looking at for Gen 5, m.2 ssds i think you're going to need this one particularly given where these m.2 sockets are located which will be close to your giant graphics card that's putting out immense amounts of heat besides all of that i want to talk more about connectivity because i think that's going to matter more to you right now than the generation of m.2 sockets that you have and that is the inclusion of the intel ax210 controller which gives you wi-fi 6e and bluetooth 5.2 but with that as well, you also have a clear CMOS button of a switch and you have Q flash as well. Now talking about all things that are Q, you also have Q release for your primary VGA slot and you also have the Q latch as well for the M.2 sockets. So there's a lot of Q niceness on this motherboard. But talking about niceness as well, I want to talk about the aesthetic element of the board. I mean, for 10 grand, this is a really good looking board. It feels like it should be about 15 grand because it just feels so beefy. It actually feels like a quality product. And if you pay attention to just the little things that ROG has added on the board, like the little messages they have on the on the heat sinks, you'll see that they have paid a lot of attention to the little things on the board which again is quite surprising given that it's a 10 grand motherboard. Yes, I know in USD terms, $500 motherboard is supposed to be high end, but in SA, I mean, given the context of everything that we have here and how much we pay for things, 10 and a half thousand rand for such a motherboard is actually a bargain. And I know it's very rare for anybody to say anything ROG is a bargain, but this motherboard is because it's ultimately an ultra high end board, but you're not paying those sorts of prices. I mean, you do get a start button, you do get a postcode LED, you do get additional voltage ranges as well, just by flick of a jumper. 
you do get an alteration mode as well which is another feature that asus has on this motherboard you get so many things that you would expect from only very high-end motherboards and you're not paying that much for it ten and a half thousand rand for this sort of quality board i think is fantastic another feature that asus has here is the optimum 2 which they have on several other motherboards unfortunately when it comes to the amd platform whatever tuning that you're going to do with ddr5 it's not going to be that beneficial okay let me not say beneficial but you're not going to see the sort of oc headroom that you're seeing on the intel platform for instance this motherboard only supports up to ddr5 6400 that is not a bad frequency to support however as we all know and as amd themselves have told us ddr5 6000 is the sweet spot for their platform so that you're able to do anything more than that yes you're going to get some benefits in synthetic tests like you can see in the benchmarks but for the most part in your gaming and so forth you're not going to get that sort of benefit yes you can compensate for that with the high enough clock frequency but a lot of the times you're not able to get there so it's rather i would say just stick to 6000 or 6400 or whatever it is and don't really bother with trying to get the most frequency out of your dram you can tune the sub timings like i did which you should be able to see but going for frequency is not going to really give you that much and that's a gift and a curse at the same time the gift part is that you don't necessarily have to worry about buying the super expensive dram but the curse part as well is that your legs in terms of the people who want to actually have fun with ddr5 overclocking this is not the platform for you and this is not an asus problem but it is just a feature of the platform as it is right now once again the features that you want on a high end and even ultra high end board this ticks all of them when it comes to the audio the audio solution here is the alc 4082 controller with a headphone amp for the front uh headphone jack and you also get nichicon fine gold audio capacitors and you also get dts unbound as well as a software feature so what else are you going to need so for 10,500 and all the features that you're getting the aesthetic element of the motherboard the tuning element of the motherboard which i'll talk to you about in a minute i don't think you're going to do better than this so as you know with the amd platform you can either use pbo or you can do a manual oc however a manual oc is always going to be lower than or rather an all core oc is always going to be lower than what you can get with pbo my manual and max oc across all cpu cores or ccds rather was 5.3 gigahertz and the performance of which you should be able to see on screen right now however as impressive as 5.3 gigahertz is on all core clocks it's not as impressive as the 5.7 or even 5.8 gigahertz you can get across some cores that are capable for very lightly threaded workloads so what asus has done here is essentially give you an oc switcher feature which allows you to switch between PBO and your manual OC, meaning that based on the current and temperature, I can either get the best clock frequency for the lightly threaded tasks, so I can experience the 5.7, 5.8 gigahertz from the CPU. But when the current goes to a certain level or reaches a certain threshold, it will switch to my manual OC, which is 5.3 gigahertz for all core clocks, meaning I can get the best of both worlds. How this system actually works is rather complicated and if you are a casual user, it will be quite intimidating. But I tell you, give it 30 minutes to guide it out and you'll definitely be happy of the fact that you have this feature on this motherboard because it literally allows you to get the best of both worlds. Asus has added so much to this motherboard. Just the physical features that you get, M.2 sockets, USBs, Wi-Fi and all of that other stuff. But in terms of the BIOS as well, they've given you a lot of features just like the OC switcher, the ability to run asynchronous modes, obviously the usual BIOS profiles, and all sorts of other features that you're getting on the motherboard as well. What you would want in a high-end board today, particularly for the AM5 platform, I'm struggling to think of what this board is lacking that you might need or want or use to justify paying twice the price for an extreme board for. There just absolutely isn't any reason for you to do that. And even if the extreme board does look aesthetically more pleasing, are you really willing to pay twice the price for that? At least I'm not. So in as far as value for money goes, it is rare to say this about an ROG motherboard, but the Strix E definitely takes it from me. When it comes to value proposition, there aren't many motherboards that can say that they offer what this one does for the price. And with that said, let me know what you guys think of the motherboard in the comments below. Remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Until then, take care and peace.